So we will be discussing running a family farm with uh, Lawrence McCauley and Francis McCauley. And just to give a bit of a background for the minister, he's, he's a friend of the party. He's been, uh, he's been with us for, for 30 years, first elected in 1988. And just for the record, I was five years old. <laughs> And uh, je veux dire aussi uh, bonjour à mes amis francophones. La traduction est disponible si uh, vous savez en arrière. C'est disponible si vous voulez uh, les écouteurs. So Lawrence, uh, I, I thought uh, I thought we could start by um, by talking about 1988 and that first election. And uh, I know I know your daughters are in the crowd somewhere here. So let's give a round of applause for his three daughters as well, his grandchildren. How, um, Francis, I, I have to ask you the first, the first question because, you know, uh, three daughters, you, you had, uh, we know you had a, fam a family farm, you were uh, potato farmers and dairy, dairy farmers. How was it when, um, when you lost Lawrence to Ottawa in 1988? Thank you, Fra uh, Francis. There's two Francis's here, but, um, well, I must go back a little piece because, um, in um, 1988, at the beginning of it, uh, Lawrence decided he'd give the federal scene a little run. And we were up against uh, a sitting member. And uh, we really didn't know the scope of what we were getting ourselves into. But uh, on May 14th, uh, 1988, uh, he, became, he was elected, nominated. And we didn't really have any idea what the whole thing was about. Our three daughters and myself we sat at the back of the hall uh, where the 1,400 people came to vote, and uh, they had to come and find us because we just didn't understand all, all of this. And uh, on November 21st, 1988, he got elected, and that was quite an evening. I must say, um, we had a family firm, we had dairy, and uh, we had potatoes. And um, so about 4 o'clock that evening, a tractor-trailer truck rolled into the yard looking for a load of potatoes, and uh, a, a cow decided to have a calf. So, and Lawrence was somewhere at the poles. So we got the, I, got, I got the tractor trailer uh, backed into the warehouse and loaded that and then proceeded to deliver this calf. So it was all a great experience. That evening, we waited patiently for the results and that was really a, quite an evening. And that went on, uh, like I, we cooked a big meal, we ate, we would had a few drinks and enjoyed the evening. And you know, it was Wednesday morning when the last fellow left. We were all so excited. So it was quite an experience. <laughs> but it, when, when he left for Ottawa, the kind of the, the bubble burst a bit. And uh, it was very emotional. And, uh, but at, at that time, uh, he was just kind of going for a little while, we thought. And, uh, he managed to get home for Christmas, and you know, the things kind of rolled out, and, and of course, uh, I taught school, and we had three kids, three girls. There were six, eight, and 10, and we all had to just roll up our sleeves, and we got at it, and we, it worked out. To this day, he's still there, and I'm still here. <laughs> so. that, that, that's great. A good partner is vitally important. <laughs> and, and Lawrence, how was it? for you um, leaving PEI and coming to Ottawa, uh, how was that first experience in 1988 and how was it to bring that agricultural voice, and I know this is important to me as well, uh, coming from a rural riding, but how was the first experience for you in, in Ottawa, bringing that voice to, uh, to government? Well, it was a great experience indeed, but there's one thing I knew for sure was that I had a lot to learn, and without a question, if you go to Ottawa and you're a member of the House of Commons, you have a lot to learn. I'm there near 30 years and I still have a lot to learn because it's, it's university and world affairs on a daily basis and without a question, it's a place to learn a lot. And it's been a great experience and it's so important to have, have a spousal support and I had that. So I'd like to thank Frances so much for all she has done and continues to do. And speaking, Francis, um, I, I know you and Lawrence gave a talk on uh, women in agriculture probably a few weeks ago, and uh, I, I want to talk 
tell us about your experience being in agriculture and how you see the women being involved in agriculture today. Well, I think when I look back at, at our own career, at my own career, I, um, I ended up uh, never really gave it much thought, like the cows had to be milked and the hay had to come in and, and it was just sort of uh, something we did and saw, I did and I saw things to be done. And I think women can do whatever they set their mind to it. And they, you know, I, and I, when I look at the number of people now that are in a position to take over, like I know Patty Miller from the Green Commission, and she's got a big job, but uh, does a great job on it. And like, I think we're kind of making a big steps into the, into the agriculture world. Like you, you see people that are head of the poultry and you're here, you know, I just meet people around and I said, wow, this is interesting. Cause, because one time it was a man's world, <laughs> agriculture. But I, uh, I, I just, you know, I, when, we, when we were on the farm, I just saw things to be done and I could, I uh, could drive the tractor, I could rake the hay, I could take the hay to the barn, I, and I just saw those things to be done, and it sort of eliminated uh, somebody else to be, you know, like we were kind of very careful of our money because uh, we, didn't, uh, we didn't have a, 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 a loss, you know, we just had to take our time and do that, so what I could do uh, eliminated, uh, you know, somebody else. So anyway, that was the way we started, and we sailed along like that, and we did okay. So, and, and Lawrence, uh, obviously we know you're the, you're the Minister of Agriculture. How, how have you seen the role of women change on the farm, or has it changed? It's just recognizing the fact that women have always been part of the farm. And since 1988, what, what have you seen ch the, the changes that have come about? Well, of course, uh, Frances is my wife when we have three daughters, so I was pretty well surrounded by women, so I was used <laughs> to being told a few things by women. I never thought that women couldn't do anything that men do, because they always told me they could, and probably even better. And there's no question in our family that's simply how it was, and still is. Uh, we're equal partners in everything, Frances and I, she is, and our daughters. They've all canvassed, they've all fed calves, they've cut seed potatoes, and now they can sit in boardrooms and they know what it's all about, or so, a good bit about what takes place in the agricultural sector. And I believe that's a great experience for, for young women. They're quite capable of doing whatever they want in the world, and for that I'm so pleased. That's great. And Francis, we know uh, with Lawrence being away in Ottawa, uh, you know, representing his constituents, I know this is something that I've, uh, I've done now for the past two years that I've, I've come to, uh, to care about um, how the fields are growing. And I know I've heard that you do the same thing, how the cornfields are growing. And how do you, uh, how do you see agriculture changing in your community? Uh, I guess basically in our community, there is... Um, Things have gotten a lot more modern. Uh, in, in our community, we have a like, state-of-the-art dairy burn, uh, robots, uh, and I guess it's less, maybe less labor-intensive, but it, there's other things that go with it that, you know, the financial part of it and, and different things. But uh, I just find uh, people, you know, even like women and that, they're out in the fields, uh, they're driving their tractors, they help out, and I find them just, you know, they're, they're a big part of, of, of uh, agriculture in our area. But uh, things have gotten so much more modern and, you know, uh, things kind of go along. And um, I, I, one thing I love to do is, you know, we're not in the farming right now. We've, we're renting our farms, but drive around PEI in, in uh, July and August and see the potatoes in blossom and see the potatoes coming up and see the grain turning golden and it's just amazing like it just never out of your blood it's all part of you all the time. So. And Lawrence you've uh, you've had the opportunity to uh, to visit many farms in, in your 30 years in politics tell us how it's changed. Or... Oh I think once a farmer always a farmer you know when the rain should come and this type of thing we're blessed to live in an area where we haven't suffered many droughts or, or floods but parts of the country have and my experience as minister is to see what other areas have to go through and it's uh, and I have a 
the privilege of trying to help out as best we can, but ha knowing exactly what it's like to be on the other side of the desk, it, I think it gives me a better perspective on the issue, but without a question, uh, agriculture has changed, but it's important to realize that it's continuing to change. Uh, innovation is vitally important, vitally important for the sector, and as a government, we have indicated that we have put in motion, let's say, that we're going to make sure that innovation takes place, particularly in the agricultural sector, and if we're going to meet the demands that we have, uh, we must do that, and I'm certainly very pleased to be able to do that. And Lawrence, you've, you've been involved for 30 years in politics, and we have so many volunteers here. What message would you give to members like me, uh, being from a rural riding, what message would you give them to, uh, to get engaged into politics? And, and how do you build up your, your, how do you make more volunteers get engaged in politics? What message would you give to rural members like me and the audience? Thank you, Frank, and it's certainly a great honor to do that. I can assure you, many years ago, I never dreamt, let alone, I'd be in this room probably, let alone where I am in it, I can assure you. But uh, without any question, there's no better experience than being involved in politics. Now, Francis and I, and it is a team, we represent a district that's, it's fair to say, quite conservative. It's, uh, but whatever, we've been fortunate in working together, we have been able to, uh, but having a good team, uh, I'm not a conservative by any means, but my, uh, my president, who was a great president, is 88 years old, one of the best presidents in, in the country. We have a great executive, you must have that, but you have to have people like that sitting before us here in order to make sure that you're able to put the process in place and to make sure that people truly understand what we represent. You're here in this hall because you support liberalism. You're here because of the program that Justin Trudeau put together, and you believe in that program. You believe in people. You believe that people comes first, and that's why I'm a liberal. It's because I truly believe that liberal, that people come first, not liberals, people come first. And the many changes that we have made, let's say, with women in important places and all that, without a doubt, we are creating an equal society. And that, Eve, that is so wonderful, and we will continue to do that. And with that, it's a great pleasure for myself and for Francis. Can I just say something? Absolutely. R I, Francis I, wants to add something here. No, I just want to add to that. I don't know if there's a weekend goes by that, that um, there's not a birthday, an anniversary, a potluck supper, a, chicken su uh, uh, a church supper that we don't go to. And, uh, you know, I, I, t I was telling somebody this morning, I'm not as keen on potluck as I used to be, <laughs> but uh, it was a great experience, and I think it was a great way for meet people in our community that we normally wouldn't see, and, and uh, that was helpful. Frances is a wonderful woman, and she'll tell you exactly how it is, I can <laughs> tell you. And yes, on the weekend, we never had to wonder what we're going to do. There was always uh, places to go, but the... Uh, you know, as a politician, when you go to different organizations and different festivities in your riding, in fact, other people do the work to put that together, and you go in, and I have never went to a place that they didn't appreciate seeing Francis and I come, so it's, it makes it just a bit easier. And I think it's so important that when you get elected, you work hard, be accessible, and make sure that people know when they speak to you, it goes to the members. It goes to the government, and that's what we have. Representing our riding in particular, that's what you have to do. If not, we know very well we're not going to be there. And, and folks, I, I encourage you to go look at uh, Minister McCauley's Twitter feed. He, had, he does attend every single event. Despite being a minister, we know that when you're a minister, the, the responsibilities are much larger but he takes the time to meet with his constituents all the time. And as a young member of parliament, this is such a great, uh, it's, it's something for me to look up to and, and, and think about when, uh, you know, when, I, when I do my job as representing uh, my constituents. I, we, we have about seven minutes left and I, I wanna make sure that we have enough time to discuss this final question. And, and that's the future of agriculture. What do you say to uh, young people who might be in the audience or listening to us who want to get involved in agriculture, what do you say to them? 
It's a wonderful question and absolutely true. And I know that with our government, there's making sure that women take their proper role in society. Frances and I have a lady who was a herds lady for us for a number of years. She and her husband run, and, and she is a very capable lady. They run probably the most modern dairy firm, one of the most modern dairy firms in the world, without a question. But looking at what takes place in agriculture and the growth in agriculture and the necessity for more food to be produced, as most of you know, I have indicated many times that we will export $75 billion of agriculture and agri-food products by 2025. And the way we have to do that is make sure we invest in innovation, uh, research, and science. But we need you people, we need young people to take a look at agriculture. The, the future for agriculture is very strong. Our government certainly realizes it's one of the sectors that we've uh, decided is going to play a major role in growing our GDP. And when you look at what's needed in the in the world in general, but in the Asian community in particular, there's a big need for food. Example in China, the middle class grows by the population of Canada in one year. And they all want to eat as well as you and I did today. And we can provide that food. We have the best farmers and ranchers in the world. We truly do. We have the best regulatory system in the world. And that's vitally important to have the best regulatory system in the world because safe food is a vital concern worldwide because things have happened over the years. But with Canada in general, without a question, with CFIA and the, and the regulatory system, people know around the world when they eat Canadian food, it is safe. And that makes it such an honor to be the Minister of Agriculture and Agri-Food and be able to travel the world and indicate to the people who need our food how safe it is. Francis, that is so important for the, uh, when you're selling product, and we are and will be there. Thank you. And I, I want to I talk, discuss about the fact that you, you were dairy farmers, and how important was it uh, to have that supply management system in place? And I, we have to talk about supply management. Because we are united as a party on our position for supply management. And Lawrence, talk to us about supply management and how important it is for when you became a dairy farmer. Without a question, without a question, supply management is uh, put together. As, as I indicated many times in the House of Commons, it, it's a program that would, uh, you people or people before you. Number one, this is the youngest convention in history, which is great to see young people taking a great interest in the Liberal Party. But it's you people that helped put the supply management system in place. It is you people that fought to put that in place. And I can assure you that the Liberal government that you have worked hard to put there will make sure that the supply management system remains because it's vitally important for the agricultural se sector in this country. It is a model for the world. And Francis, um, we talked about the future in agriculture, and, and what message would you give to young women who, who want to be, get involved in, in agriculture? Like, I just think it's a wonderful career. Uh, it's really a wonderful career. Uh, there is so much help. Uh, it, it's just something like I, was a, I loved outdoors. I just would love to go out, and I'd love to get on the tractor, and I'd love to do these types of things and enjoy, and just enjoy the growth. And I think like you really see the world, or you really see nature, you really see that, and uh, it, it's just a wonderful experience. Uh, and like women can do whatever they set their mind to. And I think, uh, you know, you, you'd see people, like it's not so labor intense now as it used to be, like uh, you get round bales, I guess you're all familiar with those, and, and you get, uh, you know, harvesters that nobody's on anymore. Like when we were farming, uh, we had people on harvesters and we had people on, on, on like different tractors and stuff like that to get the crop in. But now it's, it's less labor, labor intensive, maybe a little harder on the head, maybe financially, but uh, it's certainly, uh, you know, I, when I look back and how much I enjoyed what we were doing, I think it's wonderful. And I think it's wonderful too that when you look in the paper and you see family farms 
It's a husband and wife and their children. And I think that really what makes you know, a family farm and everybody's helping to make the thing go. Like when we were farming, the kids were great. They used to, uh, uh, they used to come out and plant potatoes, they fed the calves, they, uh, they put hay to the cows, they had that experience. And they can talk about that now because that part, was part of their growing up. So uh, I, I think it's just, I, I don't know, I can't say enough about farming and I, I grew up with it from a very early age and I think, and I was a woman and I just never really thought that wasn't a bad thing for a woman to do. So anyway. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> this lady, this lady can drive a grain combine, a potato harvester, and she can dine with the queen and entertain prime ministers. <laughs> and I'm pretty pleased. This is why I am successful in politics. Her and the organization we have in Prince Edward Island. Without that, it would not have happened. Francis, it's a privilege to thank you so much in front of a hall full of great liberals. Thank you so much. Folks, let's give a great round of applause for Lawrence and Francis.